All right, let's get going. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Uh, my name is Robin Fenoy. I'm part of the Data School, uh, Data School 8, when I started in February this year. Um, today, I've been asked to talk about uh, multiple grids. And this is uh, part of the Center of Excellence webinar. And give me one second. I'll just make sure everybody's muted. All right, let's continue. Let's start that over again. Uh, so good morning, guys. Uh, this is a CUE webinar from the Information Lab. I'm Robert Vinoy, uh, part of the Data School uh, Cohort 8. And today I'll be talking about uh, small multiple grids or multiple grids, chalice charts, tile charts, pan charts. And I'm sure there's more names for that, uh, which I'm unaware of. Um, so today, the next half an hour, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the basics of Tableau and how it splits up your view. Uh, sort of issues that we have um, when we try to create charts that we have too much data in there and how multiple grids might be able to help this and resolve this and get a better view on it. So let's get going. So the issue. So when we're, when we're creating charts and when we're making charts for your organizations, we can get overcrowded charts, right? So we have multiple lines in there. We lose the vision of what's happening. We can create bar charts where we have multiple customer names in there. We want to show them all, but we aren't able to do so because there's not enough space. Likewise, when we got very wide charts, when we have uh, several uh, data axes on there, we won't be able to see all the trends that we actually want to. Furthermore, we've got very wide charts. When we have filters in there, where we're swapping between, flicking between filters, just doesn't allow your brain to to see all those charts and remember them when you flick through and see the changes in those charts. So one possible solution could be using a trellis chart or multiple grids. So if you see here on the left on my presentation, you see a uh, imaginary dashboard. And if you just create a grid on there, that's what the trellis is, the fences you have in the, in the back garden. Um, you put a chart in every single one of those. So you can get an overview of charts just in one dashboard or one view. So you can imagine like if we have a Tableau view and we, we've all seen the Superstore data sitting around there, we have a ship mode and category and we can see all these the split up of the view on this, I think it's an average discount or whatever. You can start seeing the trends within all these categories. So how does Tableau actually split up the view? So I'll go into Tableau and you're free to follow me, but uh, this is all recorded and I'll also share the actual dashboard so you can see what I've, what I've been doing. So let's start with uh, a sample superstore, we work with discounts. So this is a, a green pill. So we'll work with a, a continuous measure. If I drag this in here and I say I want to have an average discount, it looks at the whole data set, it aggregates it all up, and it comes up with a number which is 16% rounded up. Right? And the same way, if you take this one off, just let's say we drag customer name in, we get all the customer names in your data set. Now what happens if we put the average discount back on and we decide to make it a discrete field? What happens then, it splits up your data the same. It keeps the 16%, but you can create a section in there. So if you now decide to put your customer name in front of it, it will split it up and get you the average discount per customer. So this is how you can play around with discrete and continuous fields to create these kind of views. So this is just to show you a little bit what we've done there is average discount and the ship mode you could use as a dimension. And when we create a discrete field, we create a square where you can put more data on. So now I've said here, create me a view. So I will do it all in front of you. And this is just to show you then Tableau, if, if you're asked to do a certain thing at data, you can come over different charts. And I've, I've shown this presentation before other people before. And every single time I see a different chart showing up where they try to, and, uh, visualize what I've asked them to do. I'm um, sorry, Stuart, I don't know how to mute when other users join. I've, I've looked into that before. Um, so what I'll do, I'll say create me view for free to join and see what you come up with. I'm on Superstore data. I'll grab segment. I'll put it in somewhere. Start on with columns. We also have our ship mode. 
we'll stick to average discount and see what we come up with. So and the other part that I've asked to do is the year of order date. So let's bring that in as well. Let's see what happens. Let me do this. So what you can see now, we ended up with a quite a crowded chart. It's something that we don't want to uh, easily visualize the trends that we have. So what you can easily swap around in, in columns and rows, you can start playing around uh, with the views that you would like. Let's stick to this one for now. So what you can see over here is actually something that I've visualized visualized at the start is that this you create end up with a grid so this is what you would call a small multiple grid where you can see within the dimensions that you dragged on so within the customer uh, consumer segment and the first class same there you can start seeing different trends happening and if you just want to swap them around you can flip them around put the year of order date there and then along the consumer you can see it from left to right the differences of the average discount over the years So now I actually want to go into what defines this grid when we're looking at it. So <laughs> then again, we go straight back into Tableau. Um, and what I want to do is just move these segments and the ship mode back onto detail. So that means the data in your view is still split up according to segment and ship mode, but your actual view is not split up in multiple grids. You can still see the corporate and same day yeah. are right in there. Yeah. All right, give me one second, just make sure that everybody's muted their microphone. All good. All right, all good. So where was I? Yeah, so I moved segment and ship mode back to onto detail so we can see that the, the view, the date, that is the same lines are still visible. Uh, but we don't have the split of the view anymore. So what I would like to do now is that we, when we put them back onto columns and rows, I want to introduce you to the calculation index. So let's create that one. What the index does, it returns you the current row inside the partition of the data set that you have in your view. So it's a table calculation. And if I drag this onto my label, it comes up with numbers at every single spot. So the default of compute using at the moment is done table across. So it counts from left to right, from one to 12 at the moment, also in uh, using the, the year of order date. But if we set it to ship mode, what we'll see then is that it does for the first class, it counts it at one. Then when it comes to the next ship mode, which is same day, it goes to two. Now, if we create uh, a second index, <laughs> I put that on label as well. And instead of doing it along ship mode, we now do it according to segment. We can see that, just quickly take that one off. We can see that now it counts for consumer 111. We get incorporated restarts, it goes to two, and homeless goes to three. So actually what this is, is it's sort of defining the grid of what Tableau has done for you when you put segment and ship mode on. So what I can actually do is when I remove ship mode and segment and put index onto my columns, I can recreate this view for you. So we put segment and ship mode back onto detail and I grab my index for columns. This is exactly the same calculation, just pre-written. Put it onto my column, the same I do it for rows. We're gonna make sure that on the columns, I do it according to segment and uh, for the rows, I'll do it according to ship mode. So now what we'll get is that because it's a continuous field, it tries to create an exit, but if we change it into a discrete pill, it will start splitting up your view. And if we drag year of order date to the other side, we get the same, same view we had before, but just the ship mode and segment on detail. So if we then go slowly and steady, we go into a trellis chart where we can start creating your own grid if you do not have any of these dimensions to split your view up in. The downside of these kind of things at the moment is that we don't have, if we, if we drag off segment, you might already guess it will break the view. Because the index column that we've done, the compute according to segment, that isn't in your view anymore, so it won't be able to do so. And if you change it to ship mode, it won't be able to create the same view you had before. So 
So this is basically what we've done when we looked at the index calculations. When we put index and, and do it calculating along segment and ship mode, we create ourselves a grid. And this is the starting point of when we go into a trellis. And we saw that we're able to recreate what we've done before. And then again, what happens when we take ship mode and sec mode off, it will break the view. So we need to create calculations where we can do it alongside one dimension. We can create a multiple grid for our data to sit on. So let's get into the magic of making a trellis. How do we split up the view when we don't have these two dimensions? Well, I'll start off with a, a data set which has 100 uh, points of data in there. There are 100 companies and their value, I think, in 2013. It's a data set that I grabbed from a Workout Wednesday. And it's ranked from 1 to 100. Um, but this data set, I want to actually split it up into a multiple grid where I get 20 rows and 5 columns. So I'll show you how to do this. And then afterwards, I'll try to explain the calculations to you. So let's change the data set to the top 100 brands. We've got all these brands sitting in there. And let's change fit width, got Accenture, Adobe, etc. And we've got our value, which is the sum of value donor data set in there. Now we can easily sort this by just doing a descending field of value. Descending. And you can see the highest value was at that time Google, Apple, Microsoft, etc. Now, if, if you're asking, you want to actually show all these bar charts in the same view, if you want to squash it to the entire view, you won't be able to see the brands anymore. You can try flipping around, but there's just too many marks. So in order to create a multiple grid, I'm going to use a new calculation, which is called rank. So what rank does, let's start creating that for this particular one. I'm going to use uh, one of the one of the rank calculations. So the normal rank returns you an absolute value of that given number. Oh, sorry, that's absolute. The rank gives you uh, uh, the competition of a rank. So if I do sum of value, you rank them accordingly. I'm not going to use the, the rank normal one. I'm going to use the rank unique. And what the difference is, is that in case an exact same number shows up, it will sort them, it will rank them not as the same number, but as a different number and then alphabetically different. So I'm going to do the rank unique of value. And when I drag this onto my label, you can see that it is calculated it from the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to 100. And just for the sake of it, let's do compute using brand. Now, the next two calculations that I'm going to make is going to be based on those. So based on the same rank, I want to split up my view into 20 rows and five columns. So let's start making the column calculation. What I'll do is I'll take the integer of my rank unique that I've just uh, calculated, divided by 20. In the same way, I'll create my row. What I'll do is do the rank, I've just created, and then I use the remainder or modulo of 20. Now, when I drag these two in, and we're going to do exactly the same as what I've done with my index, I'm going to do compute using brand it's already set to that and i'm going to turn them into discrete track number four the same thing we've done before we put this onto detail so now what you can see change this to entire view we've created our grids for the data to sit on and now the interesting thing is and you might know from some of the calculations our first spot is empty and that's because the grid is defined as zero zero for the first one but our rank unique returns as a the first number it returns is a one so an easy way to fix that, we go into our rank calculation. The only thing you do, you minus one in front of it, and hopefully magically, we end up with 20 rows per column. So now we're able to visualize all the brands that we had in just one particular view. So how how does this how does this work? What did we do? What I've done for the calculation is that on the columns I have an integer from my rank that I've done divided by 20. So what this means is that an integer in Tableau, it will do the division in there for you. And whatever is left on the left side of the comma will be your integer that it returns. So what happens if I do the integer of one divided by 20, so one divided by 20 is 0 0.05. So there's only zero. On the rows side, when we have the rank of rem modulo 20, uh, what remainder does, it looks at it, the division and whatever is left. 
So if I do one divided by 20, 0 0.05, um, the remainder is one because it hasn't fit in there once. If I do 20 modulus 20, well then do the remainder zero because it fits in there perfectly once. If I do 21 remainder 20, the remainder will be one. If I do 20 do modulus 20, the remainder will be two. You, know, you can see where this is going. So what happens if I fill in uh, my rank unique of one to 19, I end up with our zero point over there from 20 to 39, one, 80 to 99, four, and 100 is just a five. The same when we go to modulus, we've got our one modular 20, we end up with one, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 is zero, etc. But we still have that one problem over there where we have the 100 sitting somewhere. So the only thing that we change is we add a minus one before that rank. And what you then end up with is a prefer perfect splits of rows and columns using only a rank unique, which is reliant on brand, with just a single dimension. And you can start creating five unique columns and 20 unique rows. Now using these kind of table calculations like uh, rank unique and index, you can, you're able to uh, create multiple grids on your view for you, even though you don't have the dimensions to split them up on. Now, what do you do if you're not able to build something like this from scratch? So there is a lot of information out there on the internet. And uh, I also started off with just copy pasting. These equations that you see there on the screen, I had no idea what they meant when they started, but I had them sitting on my desktop in a text file and I just copy pasted them and then started playing around until it worked. And most of the time it didn't work, but I'll, I'll show you that this is exactly the same uh, as what I've just built in front of you. So let's go back into Tableau. I'll do the copy paste example. So I'll literally create a new calculation. So I say to column, I'll go into my copy paste document. I paste them in here. And I create the same for the rows. So we do the same as before. I just will leave brand here on detail and we have to find value in all my calculations and that one's sitting over there, so my value. So what we'll do now is the calculations that we've just created, we drag them in there, we do exactly the same. We do compute using brand for both of them and turn them into discrete fields to split up your view. Now what you can see here is a, a grid that we've created, but uh, the index actually look at the number of rows in there. So what you have to do is then you still have to apply a sort to your brand in order to get the same view we had before. So we'll use the descending according to value. And we create a multiple grid. Now the only downside of copy pasting such a, a calculation in this particular case, it will try to create a grid for you as evenly as possible. So we get a 10 by 10 grid. If you want to create the, the 20 by five grid that I've built before, you have to change the calculations. So you have to be able to understand a little bit what's going on. Now let's go back into Tableau and see, or sorry, into PowerPoint. And let's see if I can explain this to you in a bit more detail. So what do these calculations do? Well, you might've noticed that the minus one is embedded in there, the one that we use for the rank unique. And then we've got underneath the division and underneath the remainder or the modular sign, we've got these other equations in there. So the, the table calculation that's used is the index that I've shown you at the start. It returns you the, the number of the current row, what's inside of your view. The previous chart that we created with just this index, if you took up any of the ship mode or the segment, it broke. This is a complicated looking formula that's used to break up the view with just one discrete field rather than having those two dimensions sitting in there. And how it does it, it uses the, the size table calculation as well. It returns the number of rows in the partition, but the total. The integer, it takes a whole number and it, it rounds it down. The square root, well, hopefully you still remember it somewhere from primary school, high school. I couldn't really, so I looked at the definition. So the square root means finding me the number uh, which is multiplied by itself to become x if what's sitting under the square root. The division, how many times does it fit into the, uh, what's underneath the divider. And the modulo is the remainder I explained, which is an equation like this. So if we compare those two calculations that we created in the start, so for columns, I had my integer of my rank minus one divided by 20. And for the rows, I had my rank minus one modulus 20. 
we can see that the index minus one and the rank minus one are just the things that are the same. The integer sits in front of it as well. And on the right side, instead of having this 20, so a predefined number, it used the integer of a square root of the size, which will then return 10 in this case, or a grid of 10, sorry. So now let's make the chart dynamic that we've just shown. So if we have this in our minds, if we just put 20 in there, we can replace this with a parameter so we can actually make any of these equations dynamic. So if we don't know beforehand what kind of grid do we want, we can put a parameter in there and start flicking around and see what the best view is. So let's start doing that. So we started with our column rank and our row rank. We've split it up before. Let's go into these calculations. So these are the calculations that we had before, the integer of the rank, sum of value minus one, 20. Let's create those from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll do, let's say one dynamic column. And we do the integer of our one row. So after the rank, one rank. Modulus a parameter. And I forgot to create a parameter, so let's go out of this one. <laughs> let's create a parameter first. So I'll create a new parameter, uh, which is going to be amount of rows per column. We'll stick to an integer. Our current value is going to be, let's say, 20. Allow all values. We'll show this up into the stream, show parameter control, and we'll go back into calculation, which I didn't finish. So our integer is going to be divided by our parameter which we just created. We'll do the same for the rows, where we have the rank unique modulus of the parameter. Let's replace the static ones that we've create it with the new fields. We compute using brand and we make them in discrete. Compute using brand and again discrete. And we end up with the same view we had before, so it worked. However, if we wanted to make the same, the 10 by 10 grid that we have here, you just change it here in your parameter. Or let's say I want to have 30, you end up with grids like this. So this is a very fine way to actually start making your calculation dynamic. And you can do exactly the same for the calculations that we copy pasted. If we just take this part out and return it into the parameter, it will do exactly the same. So hopefully there's not so much magic after all anymore after you've started creating and copy pasting these equations from a line. Um, this was actually taken from a workout Wednesday, week 47, this particular data set. And this is how you can start creating grids into our views of multiple grids. Um, I want to show a few example concepts before I'll uh, leave it up to the audience to ask any questions about this. So one of the things um, when we're working for clients, uh, we're working on uh, different types of topics. So what we're seeing over here is several distributions and optimizations of um, uh, stock inventories so or resupplying and uses of stock and see how this is managed according to certain parameters. And of course, you want to optimize your uh, your inventory as best as possible, low amount, of, uh, le least amount of parts in there, but highest amount of availability. So in order to visualize all the different types of changes into these types of parameters for work, uh, we can see over here all the red parts are instances over the next 200 days. We've simulated their inventory stock used on different numbers. Everything that's red, we were low, we were under, we couldn't we couldn't supply. Uh, so what we end up with, if we go from left to right, we can see the red part starts to become smaller and smaller. And of course, there's a cost price related to this, which I've not blanked out. Uh, and here on the bottom, of course, you've got to have your highest availability, but your inventory is going to be worth more. So a lot of uh, customers, they probably decide to stick with one of the lower ones. Just looking at rate changes, this is something we've made while we're in a data school training. It was a one hour dashboard day um, where we look at the eviction data in the US by state from 2000 to 2016. So I've used the grid to actually split it up for all the states. So I can have a look at all the rates in one, one single view. Um, I've used yeah, well, a different way to look at it. And might, there are probably other different ways to look at it, but I wanted to start building something like this and look at the running sum of evictions, so the percent of total. So what that means is when we're 
actually seeing a, a line go up over time, so an exponential increase in that it starts to increase. Where if it's going down, you can see a slope, slow and steady going down. A calendar format. Um, well, visualization here showing the uh, San Diego in the US wind and temperature statistics over 2012. And what you can do then is you can, while you have uh, scatter plots, you can start to create a calendar. So we started January in the top, we could go to April, May, August, December. So you can see uh, trends happening over the years. And I'm sure there are many more examples out there. And for future, ask me about any types of ideas you want to have. The Tableau Public is a great way to find these type of examples. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and uh, I'll leave it open now for you guys to ask me any questions you have. Uh, feel free to post them in the chat and I'll, I'll hope to answer them as good as possible. Thank you. Of course, if you want to look back at this presentation, I'll make sure that the, the PowerPoint as well as the Tableau workbook is going to be posted, uh, including the um, the worked out version. So I've got a, a to do and a done view in there. A question from Mark. Thank you for the demo. Do you have any supporting examples? Ooh, I'm sure there are many of them out there in the top of my head. I could start browsing Tableau Public, but no, I'm sorry, I cannot think of any at the moment. Then again, you can split up your view when you look at player statistics, right? So if you have uh, yearly data or monthly data, or even you know daily or second data of a particular game, you can start splitting up your view of all the, the players in a team on a particular grid. So you can start seeing trends or distributions just in one particular view. But I won't be able to give you a particular example. I'm not very, uh, didn't make many sport visits. Yeah, of course, I've got another question coming in and I'll just uh, speak out loud. Do you recommend any sources for learning about using parameters and calculations in Tableau for people who are new to computational thinking? I come from arts background, so my office isn't obvious to me. Yeah, of course, there's many of the um, community posts out there. So many of us as well, even though I'm from a science background, that these kind of calculations did not come to me as a natural thing. So I had to start looking into them and see what they mean. So a lot of uh, the people inside the data school when we were on training, um, we, we write blogs about these types of things and how what, what made us understand the calculations. So using parameters, the, apart from the already the detailed list that they have on the Tableau website, um, the Data School blog is a very good source to find this type of information. So if you Google the Data School UK, you can see all the teams and the names in there and the amount of blogs in there is extraordinarily large. So you'll be able to find anything in there. Uh, regarding these type of things. And the, the nice thing is even though people write about the same thing sometimes, uh, everybody writes in a different way. And sometimes you understand one person better than the other in the way if they just write. Okay, please show me the chart again. Uh, sure, what chart are you referring to? I oh, will assume you mean a chart like this. So this is the dynamic version of it. And this is just a, an easy example that I picked for this particular case. And there's the other views that we've used in the, in the presentation. We all have the same concept where we look at multiple charts inside one particular view. So a question most likely answered already, but the recording will be posted somewhere. We'd like to go back to things. Yes, of course, we'll make sure to post this one. So at the moment we're recording and afterwards everything will post, including the, the Tableau workbook 
uh, make sure to keep an eye out on the uh, Center of Excellence page. And thank you, Hatem, for posting this post, learning different things about Tableau, data plus science. All right, if there's a, no more questions, I'll wait a few more minutes uh, for people because we, we finished relatively early. I didn't want to talk for too long and uh, people won't be able to last for an hour listening to it. Small multiples can also be used to show the position of the states in the US, right? Um, yes, that's correct. We can do, you can create different types of grids where you can, rather than just showing a map, you can create a, a chart where you can see the different blocks of the states. So at the moment, I've not done that in this particular case. Um, but if you're if you want to get the geographical information in there, you would need to make a graph, which at the top of my head is called. Oh, I'm sorry, Joel. Can't remember that now. So the one that I've shown you over here is just uh, is only the small multiple showing. So you can change the, the sorting order, but you don't have any geographical information on this at the moment. So it's not like Wyoming is in the bottom right of the US. Or maybe it is. <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, Mark. Okay, if, these, if there are no more questions, uh, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to us uh, either on our convo in the Center of Excellence or just as a message to me. You'll be able to find my name on the Data School website as well. It's Robin Fernoy from Data School 8. Thank you very for much for tuning in. And I'll share the link. All right, before I, I'll do, I'll share the link of the, uh, the wind speed and the temperature in San Diego. And other than that, thank you very much for tuning in, guys.